Okay, you guys, so I'm jumping right in. This is part two of this week's um, Bible study, you guys. You can check out part one if you missed it. I'm just going to continue on. I do mention um, the topics and the verses um, in the first video. So what we did in finish in part one, we're basically um, just doing in uh, this video. Okay, so right now we're in the topic of guidance. So now we're going to go to Psalms 25 verses um, four through five, you guys. Okay, and this says, show me your ways, Lord, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God, my savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Amen. I really want to encourage someone with that. Whatever you're dealing with, God knows your moanings. It's just, just a Psalm of David. He knows your moanings. He knows your groanings. He knows um, your what your prayers mean. He knows where they're coming from. He knows how you're believing and trusting him. He knows what you need. So literally guys if you're going through anything you can just believe and trust in the lord god is so faithful guys he really does have a hat to fit every situation okay psalms 43 verse 3 says send me your light and your faithful care let them lead me let them bring me to your holy mountain to the place where you dwell amen you guys in psalms 43 is um it's just a psalm you guys so Proverbs 13, um, 13 through 14 is the next one. Proverbs 13, you guys, verses 13 through 14. We do have a Proverbs series. It says, 13 says, whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. Verse 14, the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Amen. I, you know, God's guidance is so important. I don't know if this day is his dad or the manager. You guys, I don't know. I'll be trying to, even though I'm recording, I'll be liking to know what's going on around me because they, I don't know what they were talking about. All right, let me just focus anyway. I just want to make sure they is at peace while I'm doing this Bible study. So um, guidance, guys. God's guidance is um, important. It's important to have his guidance because, again, like we talked about in pr prior videos, um, not the one for today, today but, um, you know, where God guides, he does provide. You notice, like, um, when you do it God's way, you will get God's results. It may not always feel comfortable to your flesh or your will, but you will get his results and you will know like you when he's willing, he's pleased. So he he know how to back that for you. But then, you know, when you do it your way, I do it my way. Who result we going to get? God don't have to sign off on that, you know. So when we do it his way, you know, we get his results. OK, so let's move on to healing and recovery after this. Um we have hope and humility and we're going to stop with humility and then we'll pick up the next next week i think next week is the last week i have to check the calendar but i think next week is the last week for us um doing this series and then next month i know the schedule is going to be much different even than what it is this month you guys but um i'm grateful to be able to come on here and have bible study and praying things with you guys so let's talk about healing and recovery let's go to second kings 20 um Okay, are y'all happy? Verses 1 through 7. Okay, y'all good. This is Hezekiah's illness. Guys, this was another thing. Um, when God was speaking to me, like 2009, but really 2010 with that whole situation that really made me like really seriously want to give my life to the Lord. Hezekiah's illness. Um, but my situation wasn't an illness. It would have been close to one, but God has spared me, you guys. So I'm so thankful. And I love this scripture because this was something that I really... It hit home for me um, to really wake me up to want to be um, serving the Lord in his grace and mercy. So Hezekiah's illness, and thank God I wasn't ill. I didn't have any sickness or nothing like that, what I was supposed to have because of what I was around. But thank you, God, for your grace and your love. So um, that's going back to 2010. So Hezekiah's illness, I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, and we have a lot of Bible studies even on this, right? This is what the Lord says. Set your house in order. Like, put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. And I literally had did this. 
I set my face to the wall in my room where I was living at the time. And I just, I, I turned my phone off. My ex was calling me, want to go out. My friends calling me, want to go out. I didn't want to hear none of that. I didn't care about social media, what was popping or trending. I didn't care about my, my, my regular stuff, what I was into. I turned my face to that wall. I locked my room door. I turned my phone off. And I literally just turned my face to the wall and cried. You know, I would think about... Um, messages I was hearing in church because I was going but then it's like my flesh was like warring against God's spirit and like I was like oh, I'm gonna come like different excuses of why I didn't go but I had remembered some months prior this message that during praise and worship which I love praise and worship but at this time it was like so different for me um but over the years God has um turned my heart to be on fire for him for praise and worship I could just dwell in his presence for hours but I remember um and I'm gonna try to kind of hurry up with this guys because um I'm looking at the time also I remember the message um that they talked about it was a different sermon message that the pastor at this time was um talking about but his daughter she led praise and worship music and um she was like she was a radical too. she was like and I love it she was like lift up your hands just like she was just like be um abandoning your worship before the lord and you know at this time i'm I like kind of like if i lift my hands who looking but now i don't care i'll be all up in church i'll be doing my my flag my my praise stuff i'm just i, I don't be caring because i'm a radical too but at this time it's like you know but when she said that and, and then the message it, like it was the sermon and it was the songs of um what they were talking about and i remember this turn your face to the wall but i didn't know the scripture and like when i was going through my situation this was months um, before and then months later um this i had remembered from the worship in the sermon even though it was totally different and i just remember her like she just kept saying cry out to the lord cry out to the lord cry out to the lord from where you are and I was thinking she meant like a literal cry. And at that time, I was like, all cried out. I'm like, I'm tired of crying. You know, I want to keep crying out before anyone. But she didn't mean that type of cry. But when I got in this room at this time, I cried. I was like, God, I don't know how to cry before you like the people at the church. But I was like, I'll cry out before you. And I literally cried. And he, I, I've learned over the years what cry can represent. Literal cry it could be a travail. It could be a press. It could be a triumphant cry. It could be a whatever. It's just a... um. It's a cry. It represents different things. But I literally cried out before him, you know, and um, yeah, like actually for that whole week, I was crying out before him. But on this particular day, because this was the day um, I believe I was supposed to get my results back, I literally cried out before him for like a week. And on this particular day, like I was supposed to get the results back. And that's the day when I like locked the door, closed everything up. I turned my phone off. I just was like really literally turned. I turned this way to the wall. So my room door was here. My bed was here. Um, my window was there. My dresser and TV and everything was right there. My closet was there. And I literally remember I turned to that white wall and I cried. I got on my knees. I humbled myself. I got on my knees and I cried out to the Lord. And I just sat there for hours. And I was just crying and just talking to him. And you know that scripture in Romans, it talks about the spirit makes groanings for us intercession for us that words cannot explain although i wasn't filled up with the holy spirit then i could just feel him on me you know and i just thank god for him and i got my results you know and um they were trying to be all um casual and everything like good afternoon miss ramsey this is such and such i didn't want to hear that i don't want to hear the pleasantries i got straight to the point with them i was like good good afternoon thank you i was like listen is it i asked him and they was like no they were like um you don't have it. They were like, you're negative. I don't even think I said, thank you, goodbye. I probably did. They still were speaking to me. I was like, I like that on the phone. And I, I think I hung up on them. I was listening to them, but I just went into immediate, just praising the Lord, you guys. And I'm still crying and I'm still joyful. But then my flesh was like, call your ex, call your ex. The same ex, well, it a long situation but the same ex and the lord was like um the lord said to me immediately he was like nope he said you remember your vow to me because i had vowed to the lord some things that i would leave these same people alone i would dedicate my life to him i was just vowing things to the lord that i know my flesh would not vow because I, I didn't used to be that type of person so to me it was like oh no but god was showing me for where i was going right some things i already walked into and things i will walk into 
that girl couldn't see it, but he just needed my yes to him, you know? And so he was like, no, no, no. He was, that's what the Lord said to me right before I was about to pick up his phone and call my ex. Remember I told you that whole week I was kind of shut everybody out, everything out, you know, and everything. And the Lord was like, nope. The Lord said, he said, you see what I did for you? He said, you remember your vow to me? He said, now he said, this is the exact same words Father God said to me. He said, I kept my end of the deal. He said, now you got to keep your end of the deal. Cause I'm that type of person, you know, I'm loyal. Like if I say something, I do my best to make good on it. It got to be something serious for me to not make good on that. I was like that even in the world. And I'm more like that even in the Lord, you know, in, um, the Lord has just been so faithful. And even times when I have made a vow and broke it and had to repent and just different things. But I'm really big on your word. When you give somebody your word, I'm really big on that. And I know sometimes things in life come up. And when you can keep your word, you should keep it. So I'm, I'm that type of person. Big on integrity, big on, big on character. And when the Lord said that to me, it just arrested me. And I said, you're right, Lord. And I didn't go back to that ex. You know, I was trying to bring him to the Lord, but he wasn't trying to hear that. He was trying to pull me back. You know, a lot of people that were familiar with me at the time, they were, they were laughing. They were thinking I was playing like a joke until they saw like, oh, she's serious. Like she ain't going to the clubs no more. You know, she ain't with these type of crowds no more. She's changing how she dress, she changing how she talks. She changing where she goes. She changing what she do. Are you a serious? And I was serious and it was the Lord, you know, and God is faithful. And it was a process, but the Lord delivered me from that life and that ex and just different things. And, you know, um, a lot of stories with that. But this scripture, you guys, don't underestimate the power of your crime before the Lord or seeking him or nothing. So, you know, Hezekiah turned his face and I have to get off, guys, in the next five minutes. So whatever I don't finish, we just got to put below in the description box. But um, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I've walked before you faithfully. Now, I, at this time, I couldn't even tell God this because I wasn't walking before the Lord faithfully. You know, and he said, and what wholehearted devotion they have done with his good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. But the part that was sticking out to me is his heart posture. He humbled himself before the Lord. You know, that's what the Lord was trying to teach me. I got to humble you. Because the, the way you're going is not a good way. You may have fame and popularity in this in this world. You may be like this in this world. But when it comes to my kingdom, that is, that's not about nothing. You're going right to hell. I'm not pleased with you. But I love you too much to send you there. And you know too much about me to choose that path. But I do give you free will. That's kind of like what the Lord was saying to me. But in love, but in discipline also. So I just remember the well bitterly part. So before Isaiah had left the middle court, before he could even fully get out, you guys, the word of the Lord came to him. Look what he told him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life. And I, even when I had read this, I was like, Lord, I had heard it. I was like, Lord, I received the 15 years. But the Lord was saying, no, I'll give you more than 15 years, you guys, because I got saved like when I was 21. I'm 32 now. Uh, the Lord was pulling on me like when I was 20, like 19, 20. But it was like I was in and out. It was like nonchalant. It was just like, God, I just need you just for this. But once I'm back, okay. I'll just talk to you again when I need you. Sad to say. And I had to repent for that too. That, but that's what's my mindset. But he snatched. Like I'm telling you, when I was 21, my birthday was in September. I got saved October. And it changed my life. And now I'm 32. So it's like, you know, it, it, that year before I did say the, the sinner's prayer. But I don't count that year, 2009, because I wasn't really serious. I was really in a real serious backslidden state. So I don't count that year. I count 2010 when I got more serious with it. And it's not saying I didn't backslide or have any mistakes between then and now because I've had plenty and I've needed the Lord's grace and mercy but through it all he's kept me and strengthened me and really making me more and more like him and I'm just so grateful for his mercy and grace over my life you guys so I was like well you I was like well God if you give me 15 years like you did Hezekiah that's more years than what I would have had you know and God was like no I'm gonna give you way more than 15 years so I was like well thank you Lord that's what I'm saying to the Lord you guys so we got to close out on this guys because I have to leave this room um only got so much for such a little amount of time because I thought I was going to going to do 30 minutes or whatever so that's okay you guys so um he told him you know I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you from this city from the hand of the king of Assyria right I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David then Isaiah said prepare a poultice of figs they did so and applied it to the boy and he recovered and God supernaturally um healed me excuse me so I'm just just grateful you guys i really am so that's going to be it you guys we're going to close this out 
sorry we didn't get a chance to get to the rest of the scripture but i hope you guys was blessed with um bible study this week you guys i am going to leave the rest for healing and recovery hope and humility below in the description box so please make sure you check it out because i will be posting out the actual verses you guys but you guys be blessed have a great day and our lords will see you guys back next week or however god leads you guys be blessed thanks for tuning in